Good morning friends, we are inside cockpit of Cessna 206 and you could see here this is the stick and using this stick we try to fly an airplane and we will be more focusing on stick free concepts and you can understand this stick free concept is strictly true for reversible control that is if I pull this stick towards me I'm trying to reduce the speed and the elevator will go up and if I push this stick then I'm trying to increase the speed so the elevator will go down and that is the way we understand when I'm trying to maintain lift equal to weight if I'm increasing the speed then I need lesser CL so the elevator goes down and if I am decreasing the speed then to maintain lift equal to weight it needs more CL so the elevator will go up because it needs more angle of attack. So I repeat again, if I am trying to decrease the speed and still maintain lift equal to weight, I need more CL, so the angle of attack has to increase or CL has to increase, so the elevator goes up. Please try to understand this stick. As you know that the convention wise, pull is negative and push is positive. And this concept is true for reversible control. What is the meaning of reversible control? That when I am pulling the stick, I am trying to reduce the speed, so it needs more CL to maintain lift equal to weight, and hence more angle of attack, so the elevator will go up. Now if I want to increase the speed, so I will push the stick, so to maintain lift equal to weight, it needs lesser CL, so the angle of attack has to go down, so the elevator will go down, right? So then negative moment is there and you know that elevator going down like this is a positive convention, positive delta E. But then we are trying to talk about a stick free concept. A stick free concept means it is strictly valid for reversible control. What is the reversible control? That if I pull the stick, if the elevator goes up, now what I will do, I will see that if I put the elevator up, what is happening to the stick? See, elevator is put up and it is coming towards me. That is um, as if I am reducing the speed. Again, elevator down. So elevator they are putting down and now the stick is going forward. So that is the concept of a reversible control, right? So what I do with the stick and same thing if I do from the elevator, they are reversible, okay? And the whole stick-free concept is valid for a reversible control only. Now you'll see the basic question we asked was, if I want to fly at a particular CL, I need particular delta E. As you know, delta E equal to delta E naught plus D delta E by DCL into CL trim. And to do that, what the message I get is from the DCM by DCL fix, the stick fix, DCM by DCL stick fix, will decide what sort of elevator is required, right? But we talk about DCM by DCL free is only to develop a model so that I can give a feel to the pilot, and design the control so that the feel to the pilot is given, right? Okay. Let us again revisit MFD. Let us revise it. This is true air speed. This is the air speed you get from this display. And this is your artificial horizon, okay? You can see the attitude also and what, uh, what is the status of the wing, which way it is flying. This is the, alti, this is the altitude uh, recordings, uh, you will be displaying what is the altitude you are flying and this is the vertical speed, okay, which I can link to rate of climb or rate of descent. This you can see, this will give you the direction which way you are going with relative to north, south, east, west coordinate system of earth. So this is typically important for navigation. This you could see the standby here, magnetic com compass. Why the word magnetic compass? Because after all these directions are sensed by magnetometer, which uses the fact that Earth has its own magnetic field. Okay. 
The statement which I am giving repeatedly is that there should be redundancy with the advancement of new new technologies. We need to keep standby. This is the radio compass and that gives you the direction which way you are going and it uses the magnetic field characteristics of, of Earth and the redundant for this is, if you see this is, this is magnetic compass, this is redundant to this magnetic compass display here and then you also have the airspeed indicator here, true airspeed indicator and you also have redundant as ASI or airspeed indicator analog here, okay, and you could see this is artificial horizon and further redundant is here. This is the artificial horizon, redundant as compared to the MFD. Then you have got altimeter here, altitude indicator and redundant for this is altimeter which is here and then this is vertical speed indicator and like this all of this uh, are designed with the two things in mind. One is it should give comfort to the pilot after giving maximum information. He should be able to see a group of data information together which, has, which are extremely important. It should not happen the oil temperature is given here and the cylinder head temperature is given here, right? Because they are not correlated, right? So they are, very difficult. They are correlated, so they are very difficult. So that is the part of ergonomics. So they will bunch out all the relevant information together because the together they make sense, okay? It's extremely important to understand the ergonomics part of it. You have to make the pilot comfortable as we have decided that, yes, I need to know what is the stick force gradient for the pilot and the role of trimmer so that pilot can fly hands off, right? If there's no trimmer, then if the pilot is flying at some angle, pulling some force, as soon as he leaves, it goes out, right? So he'll be too tired. So that is the role of a trimmer. And here is the elevator trimmer here. You could see you can trim the elevator using this lever. So this is a general description of the cockpit, but we come back again here. What we have done in a stick free is number one, that how much stick force I have to apply to deflect the elevator by a certain amount. And then also we know if I release it like this, it will again go back. So that means if I'm flying, all the time I have to hold it like this. That is, will make the pilot totally tired of the whole exercise. So what is the remedy? The remedy comes from taps. I repeat, if I have to give an elevator deflection, suppose some angle I have given elevator up and I have to fly. But how much angle has to be given? Please remember that is given by DCM by DCL fix. But now you see, if I leave it, it again goes back. So I have to hold it. But imagine the pilot holding this for hours together. What will happen to the pilot? So what has been invented a wonderful design of tabs. We call elevator trim tab. And you could see here, this is the elevated trim tab lever, okay? So I can rotate it, I can do like this an elevator, it will go up and down, and at a point when the stick force is zero, I'll release it. And then I can hold the airplane, the stick will remain here, and it will give desired delta I required. And that is what you call the hands of fly. Is it clear? I repeat, if I have to give five degree of elevator up, I pull it, but if I leave it, it will automatically go back, so I, to ensure that it doesn't go back, I use a trimmer. The trimmer will do the necessary deflection and give that much of hinge moment so that elevator is kept there and then the pilot can fly hands off. And that is why it is called elevator trim tab, okay? With this, we'll go out and we'll try to see a few more things from outside. And before we end this, just for a completion, please remember this one is for throttle. This is for propeller, and this is for setting the mixture, which is fine mixture or coarse mixture or lean mixture. So this is this the pilot decides the, along with the engineer and the manufacturing guidelines, manufacturer's guideline. So these things are uh, adjusted. Okay. Sometimes you fly the machine with a different propeller pitch, and what is is a coarse or fine pitch that is decided by the operation. Okay. And uh, you, could, you should not wonder what is this. This is a, a co-pilot can sit here. You can come here, and when you do the experiment, you can hold the stick and actually fly. Okay, 
the pilot is there, will try to help you, you get a feel of what is the stick force. Imagine if stick force was too high, how, how the pilot will fly? So it is extremely important that the stick force per elevator, right? The stick force per elevator angle or stick force or uh, stick force per acceleration, right? That is DFS by DN. You will understand the gradient is important, right? If you want to change the speed, uh, trim speed from one V to another V trim, what is that gradient? What is that DF, DFS by DV? So that, uh, that will give a comfort index for the pilot. And you can understand human being, they learn more through the gradient, okay? The similar thing you will find when the pilot is banking and turning, we talk about DFS by DN, that is stick force per G. There's a limitation. Beyond that, I cannot uh, be able to fly because of so many constraints. It comes from central gravity location. It comes from physical limit of the pilot, okay? So with this, uh, we'll go out again and see what is the true meaning of uh, reversible control. And we'll also discuss today about uh, all movable control. I'll show you that, okay? All movable elevator surface, okay? Let's go out. We are going to discuss or try to see what is the meaning of reversible control. And you could see this is basically the horizontal tail and part of this horizontal tail is elevator. And this is elevator up, and this is elevator down. As we have discussed, meaning of reversible control is if I pull the stick, the elevator has to move up. If I push the stick, the elevator has to go down. Reversible means if I do the other way, that is, if I put this elevator up, right, that means I need more CL, so I am going to fly at a lower speed, so you'll see the stick is coming towards you, okay? If I put this elevator down, that means I am trying to reduce CL, so I am going to increase speed to maintain same lift equal to weight, so you see the stick will go forward. The sign conventions, as far as we are following, the pull is negative. Please understand that. Pull is towards me. Pull means I am trying to reduce the speed and push means I am trying to increase the speed. So the concept of reversible is as I pull the stick, I am trying to reduce the speed, the elevator will go up. And as I push the stick, the elevator will go down. Reversible means if I now put the elevator up, the stick also will move according to this definition. Similarly, if I put the elevator down, the stick will follow same as per the definition. So that is the concept of reversible control. In modern aircraft, you will find they are not reversible because there are motors, actuators, etc. And so there is no direct reversible concept for modern aircraft. Okay. So you have seen here horizontal tail and part of horizontal tail behaving as an elevator. Okay. Now we will see a case where complete horizontal tail is an elevator. You have just seen the part of the horizontal tail being used as an elevator, but this is Piper Saratoga. This is the horizontal tail, and this whole horizontal tail moves up and down. This is to behave like an elevator, okay? Remember, we have seen, you have to put the elevator up and elevator down depending upon what sort of flying mode you are there. But here you could see, interestingly, there's a trimmer, right? And this trimmer is going to give you a moment so that this whole horizontal tail, which is an all-movable tail, which all, works as an elevator as well as stabilizer, and you have to hold it. So this trimmer will produce enough moment so that at any position you can trim, right? After giving a deflection by the stick, okay? And that is extremely important for a trimmer. And in this airplane, you could see the trimmer very clearly, but where I could not show you there, you could see as it's going down, the, the trimmer is also going up like this, as it goes down like this. So this trimmer concept, you will be solving some problem, try to understand how to solve a problem, but note down that part of horizontal tail can conveniently be used as a trimmer, and its location could vary depending upon what sort of design you have. Thank you very much. You have seen that uh, so far we have shown you the stick, we pull it, we push it, and how does it move the elevator, right? 
and we have been overstressing point that reversible control for simple reason that when you say reversible control, say for example, if I push the if I push the stick forward to increase the speed, then the elevator will go down. And similarly, if I put the elevator down, you have seen the stick goes forward. So that's sort of a reversible control we are talking about. Why we are talking about reversible control? Because this is a revision session for a stick force. Right. And why did we spend so much time on a stick force? Because we know that for reversible control driven airplane, I can give a better feel to the pilot in command for flying the machine because he is the most important person for us because he is going to be the pilot in command. And when you say the stick force, if you recall, uh, we have defined something called uh, delta E float. Right? Before we come to this, please understand if I am going to fly at a particular CL, then this CL will be decided by DCM by DCL fix. If you recall, we have expression delta E equal to delta E naught plus minus DCM by DCL. This is stick fixed divided by CM delta E and into CL trim. So whatever delta E required for a given CL trim is decided by this DCM by DCL fix. There is nothing to do with DCM by DCL free. Please understand this concept. Whatever the delta E required to trim the airplane for a particular CL trim is decided by DCM by DCL fix. Okay. Through reversible control based airplane, we are trying to develop a model for stick force. What happens? You have seen practically, if I pull the stick and, the, and holding the stick, so the delta E will be deflected, but the moment I leave it, then it has a natural tendency to go out. So during flying, I have to constantly hold the stick. So that is also very dangerous, no? very tiring for a pilot. So we wanted to know how to handle that, hence that trim tab concept was introduced. So we'll see what is delta E float. Delta E float is very simple that we know that this is the tail plane, right? And this is the elevator. And you know, if this is the alpha T, a tail angle of attack, then because of pressure distribution over here, the reaction force over the elevator, if this reaction R is behind the hinge line, then this will give a moment. The leading edge of the elevator will go down, and we say it has floated up. You will understand very well that this floating will be strong function of tail angle of attack. And we know that. This is delta E float is nothing but CH alpha tail by CH delta E into alpha tail. And of course, there is a minus sign, right? Which tells us for a positive alpha T, there are negative floats of positive alpha T. So the elevator will float like this, OK? Now, please try to understand a very important thing. What is the basic difference between CH alpha T and CH delta E? Which one of them is restoring in nature? And you could see that very clearly. As I deflect delta E, this is the hinge line. Okay. So there's a reaction force here. So this will give a moment like this. Nose down, CH delta E negative. So you could see that for a positive alpha, this man will generate a negative. So whenever I'm trying to deflect it by delta E, which is positive, which actually means there is a change in the camber. So this will always try to ensure that 
it is opposing this, right? It tries to correct it. So it's a restoring type. So you have to put effort to put the elevator down. That is why CH delta is negative. The interpretation of CH delta is negative, so it is restoring in nature. Is this part clear? I repeat. See, I'm flying and I want to really deflect this elevator down. So what will happen as soon as I deflect the elevator down, there will be a pressure distribution over it. This is the hinge line. And let's say the hinge line is located such a way the resultant of this pressure distribution via force, let's reaction R, is behind this hinge line. So when I'm trying to pull it down, this R will give a moment opposite direction. So it will try to resist. That is why the CH delta E hinge moment per unit elevator deflection have a sign negative. So it's, we interpret this as restoring in nature. Now let us see what is the trim tab is going to do. Let us say that you need to hold this elevator at an angle of, let's say, 5 degree up, which is negative, to maintain to maintain so lift equal to weight so or correspondingly we'll have a CL trim right now imagine if I have to throw out my flight I have to keep this delta I up by 5 degree so I have to go on holding the stick because if I leave it so this will start going down but that will make it tired. So what the trick has been done is take some part of it, which we call a trim tab. So as I deflect the elevator like this, trim tab deflects like this. So this is the delta T, trim tab angle. And this is the tab. Please notice. Elevator is going like this, a tab, trim tab is going down, coming down like this. What happens? If it comes like this, then this generator force here, which gives a moment, and that moment is used to hold the elevator at a particular position. Now, the pilot need not apply any stick. Okay. I repeat here, how the pilot turn this elevator from here, this position, to this position, by giving, giving a moment so that it can turn like this. OK. This is clear. But because of distorting tendency of the elevator, CH delta E, it will try to come down like this. You have to hold it here. Please understand this is a very important thing. The moment it is kept at this delta, new delta E, because of CH delta E, this will try to come down like this. As it tries to come down like this, what will happen is, I, uh, as it tries to come down, I need to have a mechanism to hold it at this position. One is I hold the stick, but there is two tiring. So that is where this trim tab, which will integrate part of this, so that gets deflected like this. And this gives rise to a moment which tries to give the moment which the stick was giving through this stick force. So this is the moment is done like when this trim tab is handling the effect of the stick force, then I need not bother, I can leave the stick. I say stick force is zero, and that is, as far as stick free stability is concerned, that is the equilibrium point. Is this part clear? So at this condition, Fs stick force is zero. That is the primary role of trim tab. OK. This one I thought I will share with you. And of course, you know what are the stick forces, big, big formulation. That's a matter of detail. We have to put those numbers. Conceptually, let us revisit from here. We realize delta E float, which is I can calculate if there are no trimmer as CH alpha T by CH delta into alpha T, and then I also try to understand what is the meaning of CH alpha T, because as long as hinge line is ahead, then CH alpha T 
and CH delta E both are negative. Okay, and negative means CH alpha T negative means means if this is your tail and this is the elevator. So for a positive alpha T, if it is positive, the CH alpha T less than zero means it will have a motion so that this floats like this. Let's try to give a hinge moment negative, that is nose down. Hinge moment positive is nose up. Okay, this is the meaning of that. And for CH, delta E less than zero means as I put the elevator down, which is positive, it should generate a negative moment. CH delta is less than zero, so it will also generate a nose down moment like this. So, if you are trying to take it to delta E down, it will generate a moment which try to restore it, right? And that is why CH delta is restoring in nature. Remember, as long as the hinge line is somewhere here and resultant is somewhere behind the hinge line, okay? So this is the net force coming, resultant. This is extremely important. So because of alpha T there and because of CH alpha T present, there is natural floating tendency, and but who corrects it? CH delta E, try to restore it. That is why we write CH equal to CH alpha T into alpha T plus CH delta E into delta E if there are no trim, uh, no trim tab. Okay, no trim tab. One is restoring and one is floating. Okay, so when they cancel each other, that is the time when at equilibrium where CH equal to zero. And that is how you get these expressions. As simple as that. Not, not big, big things. Okay? I thought these points must be clear to you uh, before you solve some problem. We'll be solving two problems. But this is the understanding. Please uh, make sure you understand this thing clearly. If there's a, a confusion, use the forum. Ask questions.